I come at everything from a um, completely the opposite way that uh, Tom would come at everything from, because I'm um, not scientifically based or anything like that, and um, I came into all of this very, very much from um, my own things that were happening in my own life, rather like all this feedback and everything else. So I, so I met Hamish through all of that. Um, and it's just personally, uh, okay, I'm going down there, this is, what, this, is, this is what I've experienced. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've experienced in relation to me working with Hamish. Because although the piece is titled, you know, work that I did with Hamish or whatever it is, it's very much intricately linked with what was going on in my world at the time. And that will kind of make sense uh, in about five minutes' time. So what I want to do first of all is just to uh, bring a little bit of Hamish uh, back to all of us because I'd like to just play a few minutes of um, the first DVD that we made together which is called The uh, Spirit of the Serpent and uh, it's an exploration into Earth Energy at the Merry Maidens down in Cornwall. So this is four minutes or so. And welcome to another two days serpenteering. This week we're at the Merry Maidens, which are just outside of Penzance in Cornwall, England. We're here to find out more about these fantastic stones and just why on earth they were put here thousands of years ago. Hamish set about dowsing to find the power centre and the major earth energy lines that enter and lead the circle. Where they cross will be the energy centre of the whole circle. Yeah, so can you stick that in? Yep. We'll keep that as a permanent marker because okay. I'll have to use that. Earth energy is weaves like a river. It's such a complex thing. They join in with, with the next ones coming in, like big arteries coming together into the mainstream around the world. And then out to the cosmos. <laughs> That's coming right through that gap. This is, uh, this is the controversial one because I think there should be a stone there, actually. But then people argue that it should only be 19 because it's related to the moon. I don't know. But anyway, that, that uh, energy line, they may have allowed for that, this, this line coming in. That's a possibility. Hamish had his own idea about the gap in the circle, but we'd find out later that some of the team had different ideas. Each, each of these uh, lines has a number of, of lines within it. And... Uh, they will be going in different directions, probably feeding in and, and coming out, so we'll just check. And actually, all you have to do is ask. And that one is feeding that way. And the next one is that way. They are different frequencies. They are uh, male, female, uh, positive, ne negative, or yin-yang, or whatever but there are differences in, in these lines and they're feeding different energy in, and it's going through that stone and that stone will react to this energy but it's not dependent on it because it has its own um, energy centre and its own function and it's related to the, to the uh, centre. Every uh, power centre has a vortex around it and uh, straight radials coming out like the spokes of a bicycle wheel and they will tie up from here, from this power centre, to each individual stone. I think that's what the ancients were marking, because the, um, they didn't necessarily start with, with 20. They may have started with half a dozen stones, just marking the odd radial coming out. But as it develops in, in ceremony, the whole uh, system seems to develop, and the earth responds to what people are doing in the ceremony. This is the controversial one, where I think there's a stone missing. And they're never evenly spaced because they're very often bunched where there's a, an energy line feeding in. I think the radials were here originally coming from the energy centre because there are hundreds of, of uh, cases of power centres which are not marked by stones, which have radials. And uh, I think the function of this thing is by the old people is to mark where these radials are because it's part of, a, of their sacred temple, if you like. The hugely important part of it is to make a permanent record of the the basic number of radials coming out of this, this centre. 
So the full treatment would, would have 20 radials coming out, the 20 going, 20th going through the space. There's no other way to find these except by dowsing. Japanese are developing some equipment that hopefully will do the job that I'm doing in more accurately. On the other hand, I think if I put a little meter on the top with numbers on it, people would believe this thing. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Last little comment, I think, is a classic one for all of us with a, with a wide rod. Um, yeah, so sorry, uh, this might be a bit self indulgent. I just love seeing the guy again, you know, it's fantastic. Owen is an absolute master. Um, now, could, just for my uh, uh, thing, I need to know how many of you actually met Hamish, how many of you knew him, how, right? Oh, okay, okay, good. How many of you uh, read The Sun and the Serpent? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the Sun and the Serpent was my way into the whole thing as well. So this whole sort of uh, uh, world opened up through that. Um, what I, I know that, that that clip wasn't showing you anything new, obviously, because the power centre is, is you know one of the ar archetypal uh, you know earth energy things. You know that they're all over the place. And of course, I'm standing in one here, uh, which I really probably shouldn't do. But um, can we do the uh, the classic Hamish uh, exercise of just focusing on the power centre? Because we're just if we may, we just don't find the. Uh, yeah, okay, so. Um, and I also. I left Hamish's rods behind, so I have to use these. I left them at home. I just, I, oh, gosh. Well, this, there you go. So, look. Uh, so, we have the power centre here. Now, is everybody familiar with the, the notion of. Uh, well, obviously, we saw there, we've got radials of energy coming out. And therefore, if we put our attention onto this power centre, then there will be an in, likely to be an increase in. Um, in radial numbers. Everybody familiar with that? Yeah, 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 okay. If you give me some kind of response, then I know that you are at least awake. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Yes. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to actually concentrate on this energy here. And there is a reason for this, because there's also a personality to this energy in a way. Um, and I could feel Tom kind of switching off. And but, uh, so here we have our power centre. Now let's just, just, folk, uh, just for the moment, we're just going to do a, a count, a radial count, while it's at rest, before we all focus in on it, okay? So just bear with me while I do this, and I uh, forgive, forgive my doubting. One, two, three, four, five, excuse my back, six, seven, eight, nine, ten-ish. I'm going to stick with the ish. Again, it's not very scientific, but uh, bear with me. I made it about 12 actually this morning when we came in, but that's 10, so goodness knows. So what I want you to do is, as I'm just talking for the next 10 minutes or so, just to focus some love, compassion, positive energy, please, into this space, and we'll do that again at the end of the talk, okay? Because I just think it's really, really, really important, and I know this was something that Hamish was absolutely passionate about, is that we, we go off to these fantastic sacred sites all over the place, all over the world sometimes, and we forget that Every room in our house has one of these, and that is our direct link right in our home to the planet Earth and through our own consciousness and through, and this is just consciousness. I think, Jim, you would agree with that. This is just a kind of, this, you know, it's just part of this whole field of consciousness that we're swimming through all the time. And this is, isn't one isolated spiral. You know, this is, we've got, you know, this, is, this whole room is absolutely awash with spirals of just at slightly different frequencies. That's what we are. We know that. So let's just, so when I get really boring and I go off on my rant, you can just focus your energy <coughs> nice on the power centre and ignore what I'm saying. But please do, just focus on the power centre for the next 10, 10 minutes or so. Okay. How did I meet Hamish Miller? I met Hamish Miller in, well, it was about 14 years ago, I think it was, because I used to be a sort of business consultant in a way in a, a previous life. I'd, um, that sort of time I was living in Kent, uh, living in Tunbridge Wells in Kent and I was freelance and I was working for a very large life assurance company uh, that was based in Basingstoke and it was only um, about a, a month ago so I realised the irony of me working for a life assurance company in previous uh, existence if you like because it's sort of the humour of the universe coming out again really um, which you know, become apparent as I go on with this story. So. 
I was living in Tunbridge Wells. I've got two uh, wonderful li little boys and a married wonderful wife. Um, but I really, 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 really didn't like what I was doing, although I didn't realise I didn't like what I was doing. It was absolute classic dishonesty with oneself. You just didn't realise. You know, I just couldn't work out how stressed. You think I'm stressed now? You should have seen me back, you know, 15 years ago. So, um, but I didn't realise it. And um, what, this was kind of manifesting in the need within me to get more headspace. I needed space. I couldn't put up with living in the southeast of England anymore. It was just doing my head in. And also at the time, you have to realise that I had no awareness of any of this stuff that we're talking about today. And I would have thought you were all a bunch of nutters. I still think you're a bunch of nutters, <laughs> but now I know why you are. Okay? And I count myself absolutely as the greatest nutter there. So, none of this experience. Um, and what we did, what we decided, was that we were going to move house. And we ended up moving to the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire, uh, in a village uh, called Blakeney, and it's, uh, it was a lovely, uh, big Georgian townhouse, five bedrooms, three receptions, big garden, uh, wonderful place called Ludlow House. And moving into that place absolutely changed my life, 100%. <coughs> because at the back of Ludlow House, there is a very old section, um, it's a smallish sort of 12 by 12 mm. living room it is now, um, and above it was a sort of a, another room, uh, so you had lots of nice light coming in the top, and the, the downstairs actually there was no, no natural light getting in there at all. And when we moved it, because there's like a, well, it, the, the nature of building in the Forest of Dean is that you basically build cottages on top of cottages and everything gets crammed in, so there's sort of blocked up windows all over the place. And when we bought the house, this room was a storeroom. It had coal in it. It had, it had all the rubbish of the previous owner left in it for us. That was nice. Um, and it hadn't been decorated or anything uh, for, for many, many, many years. And uh, to, to the extent that the cats, even the local cats in the neighbourhood, were using it as their toilet, which was lovely. And all the overflows from the, the house, uh, we had several bathrooms and there was overflows from the you know, the loos were pointed into this space. So you think, you know, energy in that place, it wasn't great. And um, I, as I say, I had no awareness of any of this. We moved in. But I did think it odd that some of our friends didn't like going into that room. Um, I don't blame them. And I thank God that I wasn't more sensitive at the time we moved in. But anyway, look, the point was that... Um, uh, my wife was getting into some feng shui while well, we were living in Tunbridge Wells, and she thought, well, it'd be a good idea to have the house cleared. So three ladies come around, clear the house. Lovely, that's great. Um, that was super. It made the whole place feel, you know, a lot lighter. The usual stuff, it feels lighter, it feels more zingy, it's great. We, you know, it's all the classic house clearing stuff. Um, I, I, I thought very little of it. Um, and the... Um, sorry, I caught sight of Tom just zoning out there. Oh, completely. Right, okay. All <laughs> uh, oh, right, excellent. Okay, sorry, just completely threw me. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, right, he's off in a minute. <laughs> Is it that bad? So look, so we had this fantastic space, um, which was very dark space, literally dark space. There was no natural light in there, and. Um, Fundamentally, what happened is we had these three ladies around to clear the space, and that was great. And they came in with dowsing rods to clear. And I didn't know anything about dowsing. I didn't know anything about Hamish Miller. Um, but the, lady, the outcome of this uh, this visit was that they said, "Oh, you've got a couple of ley lines crossing in the back of your house." So I thought, "Oh, ley lines. That's interesting. I'll get, pick up a book from the library." Uh, and somebody sent me a copy of *The Son of the Serpent*. So Hamish Miller then, literally, the book arrived. That's Hamish coming into my life. And I thought, dowsing, that looks interesting. What's that all about? So I picked up some stuff like this. I was given a couple of rods. I, I stood there with them in my hand, you know. And, and in fact, I even sent off for Hamish's, um, uh, you know, the custom-made hand-forged rods. Fantastic things. You saw them in the, in the thing there. So I got a pair of those. Um, and when they arrived in the post, I was thrilled to bits. You know, let's try to get those out and give them a go. So I was standing there with the rods 
Fantastic. Right, OK, I'll ask a question. Well, what's the question? question? Am I standing up? No, don't do it now. Um, so, but they wouldn't move. They would not move. So I thought, fair enough. OK, I'll try some other questions. No, nothing. These bloody things wouldn't they? My, these would not, would not move. So um, we were going on a break, and we were, Nikki and I went down to Cornwall. And in fact, coincidentally, of course, we ended up renting a little self-catering thing just around the corner from Trencrom Hill. Now, of course, because I was reading the book, I knew that Hamish was at Trencrom, so I thought, well, we might bump into him. No, of course we didn't. But, you know, <laughs> it was a good, nice thought. Um, so, but the point was, I couldn't get my bloody rods to move. And if somebody had offered me a pension, I, didn't, I still couldn't get a pension to work for years anyway. But, uh, but I couldn't get these rods to move. I went up onto the hill, onto Trencrom Hill, um, at one point in that, in that holiday, and Nicky and the boys were with me. And the boys at that stage must have been teenagers, so they were well fed up. You know, just thinking, what the hell is he doing? And, and Nicky was you know, pretty well fed up as well, quite frankly, because I was just wallying around with these things. Not, you know, everywhere I go, I say, right, uh, is there a hedge in front of me? Nothing would happen, you know. All these basic questions, nothing was bloody happening. Three days on the holiday, I couldn't get the buggers to move. <laughs> so I stood, up the, I stood on the hill, the Trenkron Hill, and I just stood there. And I said, right. I said, just said, just said, right, as one does. Right, this is the last time. <laughs> if these don't move, I'm putting them away and I am never taking them out again. So I stood there on the side of the hill and looked out, as it happens over Hamish's land. And I said, is there an earth energy line in front of me? And they went, yes, of course there is. And they went, well, that's interesting. <laughs> so thank God. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I've run several workshops since then, and, you know, people say, oh, I can't get them to move. You know, first time, oh, I can't get them to move. And, and you just say, no, don't worry about it. Three days intensive trying, you know, just didn't work. But it worked. So um, because I sent off for Hamish's handfuls rods, I was on his mailing list. So when he launched the Wee Book of Dowsing, and how many people have bought a copy of the Wee Book of Dowsing? Hey, oh, good, excellent, well done, because it's a fantastic little thing. Um, this mailer arrived in the post, and I said, well, I've got to go, you know, I've just got to go, I've got to go, it's just, I don't know, I've just got to go and meet the guy. <laughs> now, while that was happening, in our wonderful, wonderful house, other stuff was happening, because I would sort of put my hand out to pick up a mug of coffee or something, and I'd see another arm, just here. And I thought, that's not right. <laughs> so, that's, I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> and I would see figures moving, and the peripheral vision, you know, is go around the house on the land, and somebody would just go float by. And I couldn't identify it, and I was just like, did I really see that? I don't know. Did that, was that really there? And in the garden, you know, doing a bit of the mowing, I'd see some, I remember distinctly seeing a lady, or certainly a dark sort of female figure, just glide down the garden. I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> so, so, Okay, this is an interesting place. So, um, and the Nikki was kind of aware. There was things, there was like the, the, the cooker. We had a, an LED display on the cooker. Um, you know, everybody's got them. Um, but this bloody thing would keep changing, so the time would change. And you'd say, oh, God, the cooker's bust. But, you know, it was just the clock, literally just the clock. And um, I went down to see Hamish uh, at his launch and, um, and thought, the night before. I thought, I'll ask him if he wants to do some telly. I bet he hasn't done any telly before. So I said, do you want to do some telly? When I met him, first words I said, do you want to do some telly? And he said, aye, but let's not talk about it here. So I then had a phone call from him a little while later, in which he basically said, you know, oh, is that Tim? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was driving to work and I stopped, pulled over. And he said, yeah, you know, you want to do some telly? No, well, you know what I think about television? I think it's crap. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know. I said, well, I agree. He said, uh, oh. You do? Yes, I do. I agree, Hamish. Uh, most of it is rubbish. Um, a lot of it is very good, but a lot of it is not so good. So given that he kind of thought that I was on a similar wavelength, um, he was prepared to meet and have a chat. Um, and as a result of that chat, we basically made Spirit of the Serpent. 
But, yeah, I'm kind of chopping and changing here between the two things, because in the meantime, all my business, all my work had stopped coming in. So I was in this situation where I was seeing all these things happening at home, and all my income had stopped overnight, virtually. And I thought, well, there must be something in this Feng Shui lock, so let's get the Feng Shui ladies back, because this lack of work must be something to do with the energy, because I was beginning to get the hang of the words then, in the house. So we got the ladies back, and they said, oh, there's trouble with the dragon in the back of the house. I said, what? <laughs> you know, yeah, did we not say you've got a dragon in the back of the house? No, you hadn't said that before, but that's okay. So as a result of these ley lines, they then went in to the back of the house, which, bear in mind, was still rough and you know, negative, pretty lousy place. Um, but the top room was great and nice and airy and always felt really, really, really peaceful. The top space, right, which had all the light in it, was really peaceful. You could just go and really just chill in there. But the downstairs, you kind of held your breath and went through it without looking. But, so the, there were the three ladies, my wife and I, were standing upstairs and, uh, and they started with the dowsing rods to talk to the dragon, as they call it. However, and there's always a however, the dragon was not a dragon, really, because the dragon actually turned out to be the guardian energy of the space. Okay, so now we're not talking about the spirit of place here. This is actually really, really important, because this turned out to be a lady called Jane who used to work in the house. And as far as the ladies were concerned, they were saying, well, Jane just wants to be considered to be part of the family. Okay. So she's been trying to catch our attention by changing the clock on the cooker and doing all this stuff and tools disappearing and then reappearing and all this sort of stuff going on. And so she was just trying to gently, you know, attract our attention because, you know, for whatever reason. So at that point, the reason was because there was a whole load of electrical cables in that space at the top of the, you know, top of this, this top room that she wanted moving because it was just causing her mayhem. Because one of the things that came out of that conversation, or a slightly later one perhaps, was that she was there as the guardian of that space to actually assist energy flow through the two lines that were basically crossing there, okay? So, as we know from Hamish's work, and probably from a lot of your work, where you've got very knotted energies, you've got a lot of, you know, you've got the blockage, basically. So, her role as guardian of that site and guardian of those energies, guardian of that space, was to assist the flow through of energy. She always sat upstairs. There was a, there was a chair that we put out for her. Um, and she sat in the same chair very, most of the time. Although you could, you, know, you, could, you could be anywhere in the house and you could ask to speak to Jane and have a chat with her. And that's what I ended up doing. That's where, that's where I developed my dowsing was actually, and this is what I thought dowsing was primarily for, was for having a chat to dead people. So I thought, well, okay, well, this is fine. <laughs> So that's what I, that's what I was doing. Um, and when I used to go, because then I was getting interested in, you know, Neolithic sites, and so I'd go out to the Standing Stones, and of course I would, I would just go in there. I would, at that stage, I didn't realise that you sort of should ask permission to enter. But I'd go ambling in and say, oh, this is nice, can I speak to the Guardian, please? And they'd come through and say, yes, OK, I'll have a chat. And uh, that's how I kind of, that's what my dowsing was about, was having a chat to the Guardian energy of these Neolithic sacred sites. And I just asked them, you know, were you alive? Were you ever incarnate in this site? And well, yes. Sometimes. Were you a male? Were you a female? And all those sort of really mundane questions, because it's like, well, I'm new to this. <laughs> so, you know. And um, we went, uh, but Hamish, uh, bless him, because I had this experience of, of Jane and that energy, Hamish kind of got it that I might be more receptive to actually his viewpoint on things. So therefore, maybe we could work together and, and do something that was worth doing for television. And that's what the Spirit of the Serpent was, was an attempt to try and get this knowledge uh, out to the masses. But of course Hamish knew damn well that it wasn't going to get picked up by any broadcaster. And I spent seven, eight years banging my head against all the broadcasters' doors and had various you know, degrees of success with varying diluted versions of any of this stuff. But at the end of the day, those commissioners stand there and say, nobody's interested in this. So, sorry, but you're not interested in this stuff, right? Because 
That's, that's it, because the commissioners say so. But we made the spirit of the serpent, and that was that was such a fantastic experience working with Hamish. Um, what can I tell you about working with Hamish on that? Because, ah, jeez, I tell you what. Talking about generous. I mean, those of you who met him and who knew him. I mean, yes, I was Scott, so he was quite careful with his money. But he has such a generous heart. Do you agree? I mean, one of the few people that you can meet straight away. That you think, God, what a guy. Claire Grogan, when she first met him, she, the first time that she, the presenter of this piece, when the first time that she met him was literally in the, in the Merry Maidens. Uh, she got off a train and, uh, you know, we took her down there and said, okay, this is the team, this is Hamish. And she just went, up, oh, I didn't know Santa was going to be here. It's like, you know, so it was like instant, you know, it was great. So, so but the, the generosity of heart was also... Uh, was amazing because he, we, we, the first time I did an interview with Hamish was when I went to, to do the research for the Spirit of the Serpent. And I thought the day before, again, it was a very last minute thing, I thought, oh, well, I'll take a camera and we'll film the interview. Now, I've never done that before. I've never done, uh, meet somebody and record them. I mean, how outrageous is that? But he was yeah, absolutely fine with that. And of course, having done that, it made me think, well, maybe we can make a, a VHS, as it was at the time, and try and sell that and get the message out as best we could that way. Um, but all of those VHS sales went through his mailing list. You know, some of you might have even been on that. And he gave me all the income, all of the money from that, he gave back to me. I mean, literally, it cost me several thousand pounds to make it. But he could have kept that money, but he didn't. Every penny of it, he put back. And I later read in the search for the Southern Serpent that, that he actually, when he met me and we were talking about possibly doing the, the television series, that he was hoping that he was going to get enough income from it to be able to, get, to fund a flight down to New Zealand to carry on doing the work that he was doing with Barry Brailsford. So not only did he, you know, financially put the money back, so it's amazing. I mean, I just, uh, incredible. I think... One of the, the, the loveliest times, personally, in, in my friendship with Hamish was when he first came to our house because I wanted him to verify that I hadn't been spending the last few months talking to thin air. So I wanted him to come out the back of the space and meet Jane. So he just said, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I'll do that. No problem. So he and I went out the back, and we went up to the top room. I didn't say anything at all. He just picked up his dousing rod, and was standing there, and just, you know, in his one rod, and it just gently turned towards the chair. He just put it down and said, hi. <coughs> he looked at me, and we left. And, and, he, and he said, as we went through back to the, the other part of the house and met up with Bar and Nicky, you know, he said it was extraordinary. She's just sitting there, calmly, happily, I've never seen anything like it, he says. You know, really interesting, really interesting. Because, of course, he's used to dealing with a lot of, you know, you know like, again, like you guys that do house clearance, etc., a lot of, uh, you know, aggrieved spirits, if you like. Whereas Jane, guardian energy, absolutely in control, but sitting upstairs. And at this time, the downstairs was still, as I say, we hadn't decorated it or anything, we hadn't cleared it properly. Um, and when we did eventually clear it, we redecorated. I, I, we just put some, you know, positive energy into it by just clearing it. And I mean, we didn't do it in your you know, spiritually clearing it. We just redecorated it um, and made it a much nicer space. But partway through that process, Jane actually, because she used to use the clock on the cooker to say, "Right, well, I want to talk to you guys." So she would, if the clock went, he'd say, "All right, Jane, do you need to talk?" So yes, okay, well, we're going to have a chat with Jane. And one of the times was that she wanted to be moved from the upstairs to the downstairs. She wanted her chair to be moved downstairs. So therefore it meant that she was ready to be accept that this space was now appropriate for her to be in. So, I mean, that to me is just, that's, that's amazing. I don't know, you know, what, that, what is that? What's that all about? I mean, that's just extraordinary. And, um, and it doesn't really matter, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a personal experience. And um, I kind of, I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you go to the Abbey tomorrow, I would heartily recommend that you don't just go looking for those lines. 
and don't just go looking for those Hamish pictograms. Although they're incredibly important, and as Jim keeps saying, that all the work that the DRG is doing these days, and, and, and really all the work, that, I mean, in a way, a lot of the work that you're, you're powering forward on is building on the foundations that Hamish laid down. And so, yeah, find that stuff and, and do that. But also just ask, you know, put your suitable protection on, but ask to speak to the guardian energy of that site. Again, I stress, it's not the spirit of place. Don't ask me what the difference is, because I don't know. But the guardian energy of that space. And when you go home, why don't you try asking for the guardian energy of your house? Again, it's not the spirit of your house, because your house will have a spirit of itself. The building will have its spirit. But ask for the guardian of that space. And you will find that you will be able to talk to it. And you will have a chat with it, if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not your bag, you know. <laughs> Fine. But I would implore you, coming back to the power centre, to try, because we so often forget to acknowledge that as we step over it every time, just to try and say hi every day, even if it's just hi, like a dog or whatever. Just say hi to the space, that link that you have to the earth in your own space, please. Yeah? Because actually it's really, well, I'm just going to go off on one here now, but it's actually really, really, really important. And this is picking up on what Paul is saying and what, what Tom said today. And what we all know deep down anyway is that this time we're in this amazing chaotic period. And the way forward is actually for humanity to be focused on what we want the world to be like. Okay, because this is not old ancient stuff. This is now stuff. And the more of us that focus on what we want the world to be like, with a positive heart, because, please God, we all want it to be positive, then the more it will be like that. And it's through those power centres that we do that, okay? That's my lecture over, and that's literally the lecture over. But before we go, I've got one more piece to play. But could we just focus in on this again one more time, and we'll just see how it's doing, yeah? I'm going to leave the last words to Hamish. And this is a little bit from Hamish on the Parallel Community. I don't think there could be a more inappropriately named DVD anywhere because it's not really Hamish on the Parallel Community. It's This Is My Life by Hamish leading up to why I formed the Parallel Community. So that was a lesson in marketing that we learned. <laughs> we, we will develop more. Um, it is my intention. I mean, Knight's Rose is basically me. Knight's Rose is my company. I am a filmmaker. Sorry, I didn't say that right from the start. Um, it is my intention to carry on doing the sort of work that Hamish would want us to be involved in. And, um, you know, uh, God, I don't know why I'm going with that. Anyway, let's listen to the guy. <laughs> It will be there in a couple of seconds. At the moment, we're a, we're a species driven by fear. We are afraid of um, war. We're afraid of not coping. We're afraid of authority. And that's increasingly the case with the, with the setup at the moment. Uh, we're afraid of not being able to pay the mortgage. We're afraid of not having enough money. We're afraid if we have enough money that we're going to lose it. Uh, and we live in a state of fear all the time. There are people who are, there are many, many, many people who are afraid to walk out of their houses in case they are attacked, in case they, this is not a way to live. There is no reason at all why we shouldn't live in joy. There needs to be some interference. There have to be laws, and, and yes, we, most of us are quite law-abiding, actually. 
but to create more and more and more and more restrictive laws that uh, is, is, is just not the answer. These controls are becoming onerous. And we have to start re-establishing our, our rights and our freedom uh, and our ability to make decisions about our own lives but accept responsibility for them. We all say, yes, I'd like peace, I want to live in a peaceful world, but can we actually claim that for ourselves and be peaceful ourselves? And that's where it begins. The future for Parallel Community will lie in connecting people who are able to take various groups, individuals, small groups, bigger groups of people under the web umbrella and look at the objectives that are actually spelled out on that website. And one of those is that all of us have the right actually to live in peace. What Hamish and I um, are interested in, um, which may seem a bit weird to other people, is the fact that it teaches you that nature around us is alive and we can make a difference um, by what we do and what we think and in making a difference to the world around us makes a difference to us. It's a, it's a, a flowing from us to the earth and from the earth to us so it's a knock-on effect. The earth responds to ritual and ceremony and attention and that's why the ancient peoples built Stonehenge and different sacred places like that. So you can actually re-enchant old sacred places or create new ones yourself and the earth will respond to that on your estate, in your street, in your close and then in your town and out the energy goes and that really does have a profound effect. Every single thing we do, there's a reaction for every action. You become part of what you're around, you can't help that. And everything we do, everything, all of us do, is completely interconnected, negative or positive. So it might as well be positive. Doing nothing, I don't think it's really an option anymore. There is another way of living. And yes, it's, it's uh, actually, the, I had this extraordinary out of the body experience and I went up and I, I, and I met the management. I call them the management, lovely people actually. And I realized in the short time I was up there, it might be microseconds, I don't know, but there is a huge amount of humor in the universe. And the humour and the, and the laughter and the joy is being crushed out of us because you can't control people who are laughing. It's time we, we just, just shook our heads and, and got out of this and, and said, OK, what are we going to do about it? And it says, join the parallel community, but join the BSD equally, because it's also doing something around it. OK, thanks. That's great.